If you've been watching people use Claude's new coworker feature and thinking, must be nice because you weren't on the Max plan, I've got some good news. Anthropic just opened up their coworker feature to everyone on the Pro plan. That's the $20 a month plan compared to the $100 a month plan. So if you've been watching people clean up their desktops and organize their files with Claude, but thought that wasn't really worth five times what you're currently paying, you're in luck. I wanna try it on some real tasks, some actual problems that I really have. Let's see what this thing can do. First things first, Claude is only available on the desktop app and it's only currently available for Mac users right now. So to get to CoWork, you'll wanna click on CoWork right between chat and code. So it is important to note, this is still a research preview. They coded this in something like 10 days and wanted to release it to as many people as possible as fast as possible. So research preview means it could definitely still have some glitches, but honestly, I'm impressed that they've rolled it out to the pro plan users this quickly. I really thought it would be another few weeks before we'd be able to get our hands on it. All right, so my first task. So I have this problem where I might be browsing the web and I come across a recipe that looks really good. So I take a screenshot of it or I'm flipping through a magazine, something looks delicious, I'll take a screenshot of it because then I have it forever, right? And I can always have access to it. Yeah, well, that's true, but you know, you can never find it or remember that you have it. Uh, generally, I don't go back and look. So I was hoping that CoWork could comb through my photos, but it doesn't look like that's available yet. However, I did go through my photo album. I asked Apple to search for anything that looked like a recipe and I downloaded it to a folder. So the way that CoWork works is you can either add files to it or you can just give it access to a folder on your desktop. It'll create a virtual environment to work in so that it doesn't reach outside of that single folder. However, as we stated, this is in research preview, so be a little bit careful with what you're sharing and keep an eye on things. In fairness, I'm not entirely sure this is gonna work. To give you an idea of the kinds of things I'm asking it to work with, I'm asking it to read things like this and this and this. So I'm gonna point it to the directory where I've saved all those images. And I'm gonna always allow it to change files in this directory. And then I'm gonna say something like, uh, I've pointed you to, to a directory where I've got screenshots of a bunch of different recipes. I'd like you to take all of those images and see if you can create a single document that has all of the recipes organized by type so that I can better access them. Let's see what you got, Claude. All right, so as it's working, it's sort of talking you through what it's doing. I can see there's 19 recipe screenshots. Let me read through them. And over here, it's gonna list what it's seeing, what it's working with. I've encountered some technical issues reading some of the files directly. I can only imagine. The other problem I noticed is some of them are on the are in the HEIC format, which I know is notoriously difficult for a lot of systems to use. Uh, I didn't uh, notice that in time to convert it to like a PNG. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of these files are just unreadable to it. Interesting. So it is building a Python script to process the images and see if it can extract text from them. And up here under progress, we can see it created a little task list for itself and has been checking off items as it goes. All right, I've successfully extracted information from four of the 18 recipe images, but encountered technical file locking issues with the remaining 14. All right, rather than waste more time troubleshooting, let me create what I can. I'm happy with that. Like I said, I was not really sure what to expect. I'm not sure what I'm asking it to do can be done well. So I think that's fair. And I like that it hit a certain point and said, let me stop and work with what I have. All right, here is the recipe collection. Not surprisingly, I think these are recipes that were probably taken from pages and not some of the more obscurely displayed recipes that I had. All right, it does point out, I could try uploading a few of the remaining images directly into the chat so it can extract the recipes and add them to the document. That would bypass the file access issue I encountered. Well, that's interesting. I will try one just out of curiosity. I'll even try what I consider to be the hardest one. It's a, basically it's a screenshot of the finished product where somebody just went and added text after the fact. Can you add this recipe to that document? 
see if you can pull the text off of the image. Interesting, but it can see the corrected measurements more clearly now. So it's going to update the document. Interesting. So I'm happy with that. I can't fault it for the extraction that it couldn't do. Definitely might upload some of those files to see if I can get a more complete picture, but I'd say that's a pretty good start. Definitely got some of the files that I did not expect it to be able to read. What's next? Tax time is coming and I've got a problem. Since I started this YouTube channel last year, I've subscribed to a ridiculous number of AI tools and products to help me with the channel. So really I've got a couple of problems in there. The first one is I need to make sure I'm keeping track of everything that's an actual business expense. The second problem is some of these things I subscribe to thinking I might use it for a month or two and then I'll cancel, but you know how that goes. You forget to cancel and months later you realize that you've paid $5 a month for the last 10 months for a product you're not using anymore. So if I can make this sort of a two for one special, that would be a real win. So I've downloaded several credit card statements from the last few months. Now it's really important here to say that once I downloaded the credit card statements, I re-saved them, making sure that any account data was stripped out of the file. You never wanna send any sensitive information into an AI system even though it's very unlikely that will come out anywhere that it would be usable to anyone. That's just good practice in general. So I'm going to point it to the folder where I've saved those cleaned up credit card statements. And I'm going to ask it for anything that looks like AI or tech related YouTube video related expenses. This is definitely not going to be a perfect prompt and I'm definitely going to miss a few things and for sure get some false positives but I need a place to start. Downloaded some files that have monthly expenditures. Find any charges in there that are related to AI products or anything that looks like it might've been used for a YouTube video business expense. As probably a spreadsheet into some sort of format adding into like a business expense tracking software. All right, no idea what it's gonna do with this one. Three PDF credit card statements. Let me create a plan to extract. It's creating its list of tasks, extracting transaction data. Automatic parser didn't pick up the format. Let me try again. Mid journey, Claude, OpenAI, Google Cloud. Yep, Google YouTube TV. That one's probably not a business expense. We just watch TV through YouTube. Nice. I noticed there's several apple.com charges. Let me check if they might be iCloud storage. And let me create a supplemental list of potential additional expenses. Well, let me tell you, we have a lot of apple.com expenses that are in no way related to the business, but I like that it's creating a, a supplemental list of sort of, you might automatically dismiss any Apple charges because they're for, you know, laptops and phones and things like that. But maybe there's some iCloud storage in there you might be using for your business. So that's exactly the kind of thing I was hoping it might catch that I might not think of. All right, so it's got an Excel spreadsheet, which is exactly what I asked for, but boy, is that hard to read. So the next awesome thing about Coworker is you can ask it to create a simple little app right inside of Claude. Can you build a quick little visualization app for me? I'd like to be able to see these um, on an HTML page across categories and be able to maybe see pie charts or sort it in some sort of more visual format that's gonna be easier than just scrolling through an Excel spreadsheet. All right created an interactive HTML dashboard for your expenses. Let's take a look. All right, here's what we got. I am gonna guess that some of these numbers are wildly inaccurate, or at least I'm gonna hope that that's the case. So yeah, so this has a, a bunch of subscriptions. This is basically our cable. We don't actually use this for AI. This is just how we watch TV. So it's got some false positives, but that's a really nice overview. And that makes me think I might wanna build an app I mean, that's pretty great. However, could we now make this interactive so that I could go in and mark some of the expenses as exclude from the list? If I happen to know they're not business related expenses, I'd like to be able to just click a button, exclude them from the list and remove them from that Excel spreadsheet. I will note that this has been using Sonnet 4.5 and I'm pretty impressed with how well it's done so far. Normally I would go up to the Opus 4.5 model and ask it to build something like this. It's just gonna be a little bit more robust, especially for more complicated coding tasks. But I have heard that that does use 
quite a few more tokens going in through Coworker versus using like Claude code. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run it with Sonnet 4.5. If it needs to be fixed beyond what Coworker can do, I'll probably take that over to Claude code and ask it again using the more robust Opus model. Absolutely, I'll add an exclude button to each row. All right, it's done. That was really fast. That was much faster than I expected. All right, and here is the updated website. It's still quite colorful, I will say, and it's got the exclude button. So I know that doesn't count and that doesn't count. And that's excellent. YouTube and tech expenses, 935. If we exclude a couple more, exclude, exclude, and exclude, yeah down to 596. All right, so that's exactly what I wanted. I could definitely add or subtract features, but I have to say that's really exactly what I asked for. And I'm impressed that Sonnet 4.5 was able to do that and handle it. And it handled it really quickly. So that means fewer tokens and that means more room to play, which brings us to the next task. So this doesn't happen often, but every once in a while, I'll make a video where I want a series of images to go along to kind of highlight or help explain what I'm talking about. So I recently built an app. The app will create a list of B-roll images that I might need so that I can take each one, copy, paste it into ChatGPT and wait. That can take a while. And as you know, that requires a lot of babysitting, especially ChatGPT, those images can take really quite a while to come back. So Claude does not have an image creation system of its own, but you can now add an extension into your Chrome browser to let Claude use Chrome. I'm thinking Claude could do that for me. That's sort of a repetitive task, uses a file, uses a interaction with a website. So I, I think that's something Coworker could do. I can ask a Coworker to go ask ChatGPT to create a bunch of images for me, right? All right, so I, again, don't know what to expect. I'm curious to see if it can manage this. So this time I just have a single file where I've got all this information. So I'm just gonna add the file directly to Coworker. I need you to use this file and use the Chrome browser to navigate to ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to create all of the images that are spelled out in this file. It includes the art style and the scene and the, the characters that need to be generated in each image. This should be interesting. All right, I can see the file contains four detailed images for an anthropomorphic red panda inventor in a solar punk setting. Excellent. Uh, needs to make sure I understand a few things. This will require me to navigate to ChatGPT. You may need to log in. So that's good. It's spelling out exactly what's happening. It's gonna go somewhere. It's going to do something on an external website. This is now beyond Claude's scope. This is beyond my desktop, it is telling me very clearly it's going outside and asking for something specific of another system. So here you can see it is opening the browser. Uh, it's gonna ask for permission. Yep, I'm gonna tell it that's fine. I'm definitely gonna need to log in. All right, so it's telling me, it told me that I needed to log in. I needed to make sure that I logged in. It can't do that for me, which is good. So this is now Claude, hopefully reading from the file I gave it, and it's gonna go ask ChatGPT for all those images. And it is letting us know every step along the way. I've entered the prompt. The prompt has been submitted. It's very clear Claude is using this browser, so everything is, it's trying to make it as clear as possible that it is controlling things on your computer now. Um, this is, okay, this is pretty fantastic. So I created the file, well, let's be honest, I didn't create the file with the images I wanted. I think I asked Gemini to create a series of images about something fanciful for me, having to do with AI or tech. To be honest, I'm not even sure what the images exactly are. I know they involved a red panda that was steampunk style. It sounded pretty cute. I don't know what I'm gonna get. Oh, that's fantastic. All right, it looks like it's already working on the second prompt. I believe there's four images total. So if this gets even beyond one, I'm calling this a success. If it gets all four, this is a wild success. All right, we're on image three. This is looking pretty good. All right, I believe we are on the fourth and final image. I honestly didn't expect it would get this far. And I so far have not had to go back and add any additional input. 
once I logged in, I could have just walked away. It's created every single image from the file I gave it all on its own. Okay, I, I believe that's done. And that is just beyond my expectations. Super impressive, but let's go for broke. Any chance you can go and download all of those images for me? Just put them in my downloads directory. It would be great. Thank you. I'll download all four images for you. Let me scroll up to find each image and download them one by one. No way. There's no way this will work. That's impossible. I am, um, it is not obvious how to download these images. So once again, I actually did not expect that it would be able to download any of them potentially. I can't imagine it's not gonna get stuck on this screen somehow. <laughs> So far, it does look like it's downloaded the exact same image three times. This is frankly, this is blowing me away. It understood that it downloaded four images, but it was the same image over and over. I think it's using every possible save image option that exists in ChatGPT. I have got to give it credit. It is, it is really running the gamut of options in order to complete this task. Three out of the four, one more to go. It has downloaded multiple instances of three of the four images. It's tried everything it knows how. It's to the point where it now needs feedback from me. And it says, let me be honest with you about the situation. I have been trying multiple approaches to download the images, but ChatGPT's interface seems to require direct user interaction for downloads that my automation cannot fully replicate. So it's basically telling me, uh, you might need to go do this. Here's what I recommend. Here's all the ways I know of to save an image. But would you like me to keep trying? This is beyond what I expected. There's a way to train a skill inside using Claude inside of the browser. So I could go in there and start recording the interactions on the screen. And uh, the Claude would then know how to go and replicate the download function for each image. That's sort of beyond what I'm looking to do today. But honestly, the fact that it got as far as it did and tried so many options is really impressive. This is exceeded my expectations for sure. Super impressive. But I know we're all wondering the same thing. What exactly were all the images that it was creating for me? Uh, all right, so it looks like Bite the Red Panda creating a holographic butterfly. <laughs> He's hooking up his robotic butterfly, programming it. Uh-oh, uh, yeah, not everything goes according to plan until it does. Well done, Claude, really well done. All right, that, <sighs> I have to say, I did not expect that. I really figured that at least one of my three tasks would fail kind of spectacularly and I wouldn't even be able to put it in the video, but I didn't have to doctor anything. I have to say that was astonishing. So getting recipes from the screenshots, I have to say surprisingly, that was probably the least successful, but even that got further than I expected and it was able to extract information from some of the images I didn't think it would be able to use at all. The next one analyzing spending data from credit card receipts, that was great. That did exactly what I asked, exactly how I asked it, and even got a little app up and running. The last one asking Claude Coworker to take a file and go off in the browser and ask ChatGPT to create a bunch of images, that one blew me away. I've seen other people do that, but I did assume there was a lot more pre-written skill management or a little bit more hand-holding or training that was going on. I didn't do any of that. The only thing I had pre-installed was the Claude extension in my Chrome browser but that is literally just as simple as installing an extension on your Chrome browser. So I do now finally see what all the fuss is about. Claude Coworker, there are so many more uses for this than just cleaning up your desktop. This is just the beginning. If this is what they threw together in 10 days of, we wanna get this out to people, I can't even imagine where this is going. So if you have access, Go give this thing a try. Let me know what you come up with because man, this thing could do so many things. I didn't even touch on connectors or skills or all of the other pieces that we can add to Claude and make it do so much more. 
Great job, Anthropic. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.